Here's what's happening in the city of Rockville. We'll introduce you to a new Rockville neighbor, let you know how your child can become mayor for the day, and tell you about a group of Rockville youth knitting comfy homes for the area's wildlife. This is all the latest news in the city. This is Rock 11 Now. Hello and welcome to the March edition of Rock 11 Now. I'm your host, Morgan Lash. Mayor Bridget Newton stopped by Falls Mead Elementary School to promote the If I Were Mayor essay contest, where fourth graders are encouraged to write about what they would do if they were mayor of Rockville. The winner of the contest will be declared mayor for a day. Here's the story. Mayor Bridget Newton spoke to students at Falls Mead Elementary School, getting them excited for this year's If I Were Mayor essay contest. Well, I want to thank you all for inviting me to talk to you today. I know you're going to be working on your essays, the fourth grade If I Were Mayor essay for the state of Maryland. They're all due by the end of March, um, so we're getting a good head start on it. But I wanted to talk to you about what it's like to be the mayor of Rockville. The annual contest is sponsored by the City of Rockville and the Maryland Municipal League and gets fourth grade students throughout the state thinking about what changes they'd like to see happen if they were mayor of their hometown. Children are the future. Um, it's important that they understand how government works, um, what responsibilities they have as citizens, um, as children and then as adults and maybe some of the um, questions that their parents are asking or ways that their parents are voting uh, they would now understand a little bit more about what's going on in the city whatever issues their parents are currently um, talking about or testifying on maybe now the children will have a better understanding. Mayor Newton thinks that some of these kids could even be future leaders of Rockville. I think we have five people who are going to run for council when they're old enough what do you think let's give them a hand. For more information on the If I Were Mayor essay contest, go online to mdmunicipal.org slash essay. At a recent public hearing before the mayor and council, residents testified about the proposed changes to the city's animal control ordinance. We'll tell you more about what these changes could mean for residents and how to get involved in the discussion. The Rockville Mayor and Council held a public hearing on the proposed amendments to the city's animal control ordinance on February 9th. The proposed changes include the licensing of cats and ferrets, a trap, neuter, and release program for feral cats, and allowing citizens to keep hens and other livestock as pets. Many of those who testified at the public hearing were favorable to the proposed changes. I think it's better for the animals and I think it's better for the city. It, it gives the city some control over things, but it also protects the animals. Um, so it's a win-win situation. Rita Flagar believes the trap, neuter, and release policy for feral cats is a chance to better the city. She and her husband have trapped, neutered, and released over 100 feral cats in Maryville, Lincoln Park, and surrounding areas. Since having the cat spayed, neutered, and vaccinated, I've heard from a multitude of neighbors that they hear much less yelling with mating and are grateful for not having litter after litter of kittens born under their sheds and porches. Many residents are hoping for the opportunity to house livestock in their yards, including 10-year-old Sophia Zuckman. My mom grew up on a farm, and I, um, we still will visit it a couple times each year. I would really love to have some of the same experiences she had as a kid. Thank you for your time. Go chickens! <laughs> Although many testified in favor of the changes, Brigitta Mulliken is nervous about how the addition of new animals, such as chickens and goats, will affect the reputation of Rockville. I really think that if, if people start having chicken, we will get a terrible reputation. I think it's a very sophisticated city. I've been here for 49 years. I'd like it to stay that way. Councilwoman Julie Polakovich Carr initiated the amendments to the ordinance that would change the city's policies. The county made a number of changes about five years ago uh, to restrict uh, the tethering or tying up of animals. I think it's time that the city catches up in terms of those county regulations and laws to make Rockville a more humane place for animals. The public record will stay open until 5 p.m. on Tuesday, February 24th for comments on the proposed changes. Written testimony can be submitted to mayor and council at rockvillemd.gov. Adoption of the ordinance is tentatively scheduled for April 20th. For more information, call the city clerk's office at 240-314-8280. For Rock 11 Now, I'm Christine Rice. 
Rockville is establishing a program to encourage minority, female, and disabled-owned businesses to do business with the city. We spoke with Council Member Beryl Feinberg to learn a little more about the program. A minority female disabled program is a purchasing type of program to ensure that everyone has equal access to the opportunities to procure goods and services in the city or any other jurisdiction. And this program currently that we are embarking upon here would apply to those programs that are owned 51% by persons who are minorities, as will be defined in our policies and procedures, uh, by gender, female owned, and persons with disabilities. And it is to foster economic development for firms that are MFD owned. It is to provide technical assistance to those firms who may be new to government procurement and specifically with the city of Rockville. And it is to do outreach activities to let those firms that are MFD eligible firms know that there are business opportunities with the city. Senior scamming, where senior citizens are taken advantage of financially, is a growing problem throughout Montgomery County. The Rockville Senior Center recently hosted a seminar on senior scams. I stopped by to learn a little bit more about the issue. Well, senior scams are a growing uh, threat to senior citizens, not just in Montgomery County, but in Maryland and the whole country. Uh, scammers target seniors because of their particular vulnerabilities. Uh, they tend to have liquid savings. Uh, they tend to be gullible. They tend to be trusting. Um, they tend not to report scams once they've occurred. Financial educator Tom Hoopingardner has seen many different methods that criminals can use to try and scam seniors. A life insurance that someone doesn't need. If you don't have dependents, you probably don't need life insurance, even if it's only $9.95 a month, and even if a really handsome guy on TV sells it. <laughs> Tom says that most scams happen over the phone, and he has some words of advice that all seniors can use to avoid being scammed. If it's not somebody you want to talk to, if it's not somebody you ask to call you, just hang up the phone. Don't try to engage in conversation to figure it out. Just hang up. Seniors that attended the event found it helpful and plan to be on the lookout for these scams in the future. For tips on how to avoid scams and other common crimes, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash crime prevention and click on crime prevention tips. Snow and ice storms produce an average accumulation of 16 to 24 inches annually in Rockville over the course of several storms. On occasion, significant amounts of snowfall in a very short period of time forces the city to declare a snow emergency. In the city of Rockville, a snow emergency is declared by the city manager when we're expecting significant snowfall. And what it means is, is really parking restrictions. It's, it means that you should get your cars off the street, put them in your driveway, put them in your garage. If that is impossible because you have too many cars and you don't have facilities to do that, you should only park on the even numbered, house numbered side of the street. And in courts and cul-de-sacs where the numbers don't go odd and even, you should park on the left hand side of the cul-de-sac or court as you enter it. So you only park on the even side where there's numbers and only on the left side when you go in there. What it does for us is it gets the cars to one side of the street and allows us to clear more of that street. And then when the snow is over with, uh, it allows more passageway, more parking on those residential streets because if we don't do this, what we'll do is we'll have to plow around all those vehicles and afterwards if there's a significant snowfall, that snow doesn't melt too quickly and they have parking problems. It's rare that the city declares a snow emergency and, and the way we try to approach anything is really uh, in a very soft approach. We're not going to go out and, and ticket everybody out there. We want to make sure that everybody's alerted to the fact that there is a snow emergency. We want to make sure that they understand what they should be doing. So when Public Works calls us and they can't get their trucks through, we'll go out and we'll talk with the residents as long as we can find them and ask them to move the cars. The uh, violations can be that your, your car can be cited. You can, be, you can get a violation 
violation or you can have your vehicle towed. Uh, during a snow emergency, uh, basically you should do all you normally do to prepare for, for, for emergency. Uh, prepare yourself by making sure your uh, shovel, you have your shovels, you have your cold weather gear. If you're traveling outside, of course you want to minimize traveling, but if you're traveling outside, make sure you dress warmly, your car is prepared, and you help your neighbor, etc. Do all those things in preparation uh, for normal heavy snowfalls. In Rockville, there's no reason to let the cold winter months prevent you from reaching your fitness goals. The Rockville Swim and Fitness Center offers classes, programs, and facilities year-round. In February, Rockville residents showed that the cold weather wasn't about to slow them down as they competed in the Dash and Splash, a challenge involving both swimming and running. The Rockville Swim and Fitness Center was the arena for this competition. Rockville 11's Christine Rice was there for all of the excitement. The Rockville Swim and Fitness Center recently held the fourth annual Dash and Splash competition. This event gives the residents of Rockville a chance to compete with one another in a fun environment. It's an event for the local community, um, adults. Um, the Dash is 20 minutes on a treadmill, as far as you can go. 10 minutes to change clothes and 20 minutes to swim, as far as you can go. We count your laps for you. Coordinators and participants at the event believe the Dash and Splash is a great way for people to start competing in triathlons. Well, I think it's important because it's a, it's a, it's a great entry into the multi-sport world. If you're interested at all in triathlon, um, this is a great way to get into it. You get to do this indoors, see kind of where you stand relative to other people, and work from there. So it's just a great way to test yourself. Well, if you're already a triathlete, it's a good way to kind of start up and start to warm up on your season. If you're not, it's a way, great way to try to test yourself and see what you need to improve on. Those involved in the event ultimately feel that Dash and Splash is a great opportunity to get involved and get competitive, but in a fun way. It really gets you motivated, like seeing the other contestants, um, you know, trash talking each other, as Greg likes to say, and really bantering with one another. It's like you, you're, you're a part of it. And it keeps getting better and better every year. More people get involved and uh, more racers are out there. It's a great time. And it's just fun. It's just fun to compete. Come out with your friends and uh, see who can get the farthest. It's always a great time to get in shape. Find out all the classes and programs available at the Swim and Fitness Center by going to rockvillemd.gov slash swimcenter. And while on the site, check out the winners of this year's Dash and Splash. For Rock 11 Now, I'm Christine Rice. The Croydon Creek Nature Center hosted a nature knit along where residents were able to knit nests for wildlife rehabilitation staff to hold small animals. Rockville 11's Colby Ford grabbed a set of needles and joined in on the fun. I'm Colby Ford here with Rock 11 Now and I'm sitting here with Hannah and Erica where they are casting on 54 stitches. They'll knit for three inches, do some decreases, they'll sew it up, and then they'll have a nest used to help rehabilitate baby animals. Bright colored yarn and a pair of knitting needles were the only tools needed to make an impact in the lives of some small animals. Young volunteers gathered at Croydon Creek Nature Center to learn how to stitch patterns into cozy nests that will be donated to the Rockville Second Chance Wildlife Center. Using basic knitting techniques, the team will sew up about 20 comfy homes that simulate the animals' natural habitats, allowing them to snuggle next to each other and keep warm during the chilly winter. Most of the knitters were first timers and the more experienced girls were eager to share their skills. I'd say the most fun was just trying to like teach other people how to knit. I find that helping animals is fun. It's good for the environment and for everybody to help the wildlife. In. Croydon Creek Supervisor Elisa Toten says that the Nature Knit Along aims to get people more involved in preserving and protecting the environment. What I want them to walk away with is that you can do something no matter how small to help wildlife. So I think that's really important that there are lots of different ways to give back. So if you're comfortable in nature, you can go outside and do trail cleanups. Or if you're comfortable inside, you can make these knitted nests and contribute. This public endeavor highlights the city of Rockville's bigger environmental mission, which is to maintain a lively and safe place to live for its residents as well as its furry inhabitants. In the city, we believe in sustainability, and so um, sustainability has to do with um, sustaining the environment, um, sustaining young people's interest in the environment. So there are a couple of different um, ways that we're doing that, by encouraging people to take care of wildlife and also by helping the next generation become good stewards of the earth. Others who are interested in helping out can still drop off nests at the Nature Center 
and they can find all the patterns at rockvillemd.gov slash Croydon Creek. For Rock 11 Now, I'm Colby Ford. The Historic District Commission works to preserve Rockville's rich history and architectural heritage. We'll tell you a little more about their mission and how to get involved with the group. Rockville 11's Shang Lim has this profile. Previously, this Created by the mayor and council in 1966, the Historic District Commission is committed to preserving architectural properties within the city of Rockville. We really keep an eye out for uh, maintaining the, uh, the historic and cultural fabric of our community. As a historic preservation planner for the city, Sheila Bashiri and the HDC members also work on reviewing whether residents and developers can alter their buildings. Right now, the Historic District Commission is looking at a lot of properties for evaluation of significance to determine whether or not they are significant enough to be saved or whether we should allow people to demolish them. There's a big bu building boom going on here. Besides improving property values within historic district, the commission also help homeowners to maintain their properties. Montgomery County offers a tax credit for um, owners of uh, historically designated homes and it's 25 percent of exterior maintenance um, and uh, that's a nice way of, of sort of allowing citizens um, a little tax incentive to, uh, to keep their homes preserved. One of the challenges that HDC is facing now is how they can save all buildings that are built in the post 1940s, 50s and 60s. A lot of them are being torn down because uh, there's not much of an appreciation for the style uh, uh, in that period. So uh, we're faced with uh, trying to preserve an era that's not very much in favor right now. Homes from the recent past, uh, uh, post 1940s World War II homes, they seem to not be as important to some people and so we're starting to lose those resources. In order to enhance their preservation job, the HDC encourages the community to join in their effort. We want to have as much representation for the citizen as possible, so if we can get an alternate member, that person can be available to fill in when someone can't make it. I'd like to share my knowledge of uh, architecture and historic structures uh, with uh, the people that come to the HDC. and, and uh, uh, it's something that I think that uh, any responsible citizen should be doing. For more information on how to get involved, visit rockviewmd.gov slash boards commissions. For Rock 11 Now, I'm Sheng Lim. Glenview Mansion was the setting for the annual student art show. Artwork from Rockville students lined the halls of the gallery at the opening reception. In case you missed it, here's a recap of the event. Just as it has for decades, Glenview Mansion is hosting the Rockville Student Art Show. The exhibition displays works of art by Rockville students from kindergarten through 12th grade. March is known as Student Art Show Month, offering art exhibitions around the country. This show has been a staple of the Rockville community for 30 years. Julie Farrell, the arts program specialist for the city of Rockville, has been running the event for 10 years. It's crazy because we get hundreds of pieces that come in, um, but the best thing is the kids who have an appreciation for art or even who might not come in, see their work displayed where normally is the work of some very well-established artists is hanging. Um, they can see their work there and it's sort of pride of place for them. Students of various ages and their families came to the opening reception to see their artwork hung in the Glenview Mansion Art Gallery. Some of this art was awarded a ribbon for first, second, or third place, or honorable mention. Yeah, definitely. I'll do it next year. This is the first time I heard about it, so I just submitted something, and um, luckily I got this honorable mention. So yeah. Craig Witt, the temporary president of the Rockville Art League, sees this exhibition as an exciting opportunity for the students' love of art to grow. To see the kids come in and uh, they have such a deep love for art, and uh, that really caught my heart. It really touched me because, it, you know, you just don't see that a lot today. Uh, it seems like people kind of get away from art, but the kids are still at it. They're still creative. You can catch the Student Art Show at the Glenview Mansion until Thursday, March 5th. For more information, go to rockvillemd.gov slash glenviewgallery. 
For this month's episode of Meet Your Neighbor, we'll introduce you to three lifelong Rockville ballerinas that have transitioned from student to teacher. Rocio Snowdy has the story. <laughs> Lifelong residents Aaron Kwong, Eleanor Simpson, and Catherine Chung Pinichai are positive examples of the city of Rockville and its dedication to the fine arts. Growing up in Rockville's ballet program, all three dancers learned the invaluable lessons about discipline, all the while having fun and expressing themselves. So I started ballet when I was three, and it's something my sister started before me, and she's three years older, so I had always seen her sort of do the dan little dances around our house and I was like well that looks really cool and fun and so I went to pre-ballet I was like wow this space is so big this is a little terrifying so I was I was pretty shy when I was little so um, ballet really helped me like the classes really helped me push myself and come out of that sort of shyness I was sort of the opposite because I really liked being in class and I liked you know trying to make myself or like what I see in the mirror but I was a little stage shy so um, that sort of, I think performing and like living this way has sort of helped me come out of my shell and definitely uh, develop a lot more confidence. I fell in love with uh, ballet after I started going to shows, uh, the Rockville Slick Ballet shows with my grandparents and I saw these women on stage in point shoes and elaborate costumes and I thought that's what I really want to do. The skills you learn taking class, the discipline that you learn it applies to everything. I mean, case in point, time management. Coming to ballet multiple times a week is a huge time commitment. The rehearsals for the shows are huge time commitments. Um, and so in order to really commit to that, you have to appreciate the balance that it takes. While ballet is considered a highly technical art form, these instructors make sure that fun and creativity are the priority for the young and the young at heart. It's a lot easier than it was maybe 10 years ago when I first started teaching the three-year-olds. Uh, but at that age, they are just like sponges. They can pick up on so much. And they, though they don't understand all the technical terms of ballet, um, just getting them excited about dancing and movement across the stage, it's, uh, it's great. I don't want to lose that passion, though, because I, I want it to come in and be like, you're going to stand on your tape and you're going to do what I say right away. But at some point, you've got to appreciate that, that what they're showing you is that they are excited. They're excited to be there. They're excited to dance. And that's what we want to keep. We don't want to lose that. Because, you know, if you build little dance robots, how long are they going to be like, OK, this is so fulfilling. I can do all of the steps. But, you know, if you, if you cultivate that passion and give the, the child time, they'll grow into it. And I really love teaching adult beginners. The adult beginners gives you a, a sort of different approach. You know, it's less just embodied and a lot more sort of, you can have a discussion about how the steps come to be and, and things like that. Coming up through the city's ballet programs have inspired these dancers to continue to produce the quality of work their audience has grown accustomed to and continue to present their finest to Rockville's artistic community, whether that be through teaching or performing. We have a, a consistent audience, you know. There are people that aren't related to any of us, any of the dancers, who we recognize, who have come to shows for a long period of time. There are little kids, or girls who, and boys actually, who come to the shows and it's their first time and they come up and they say, could you sign my program after the school? And we're like, oh yes, we're so glad you enjoyed it. And then the next semester you see them in your ballet sessions, which is fantastic for me because I mean, it's so rewarding. We get a lot of um, regulars who come to the performances and a lot of children. And our performances are so family oriented that it makes the arts accessible to kids. And for those of you who believe it is too late to start something new, these words are for you. We have had and we still do have um, not only like parents and children who do ballet together, but also like we have like little children, then their parents, and then their parents yeah. who are also in the ballet. You hear people say things like, well, once you're 12, forget about starting ballet. You're never going to do anything with it. But that's absolutely not true because, you, you know, all it takes is, is like you're saying, seeing the picture and then trying to create it with your own body. And, and you, you would be so impressed at, 
at the people as they progress through adult beginners. We're very accepting, <laughs> anyone. You're never too young and you're never too old to learn the art of ballet. Anyone can dance if they want to. And I encourage everyone to continue dancing and finding that inner dancer, because everyone has one. <laughs> For Rockwell 11, I'm Rocio Snowdy. That wraps up our March edition of Rock 11 Now. I'm your host, Morgan Lash. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, at Rockville 11, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive web content. On behalf of the entire team here at Rockville 11, thanks for watching.